today on the IoT Show, where we'll talk about Azure IoT with Sam George, the CVP for the Azure IoT Engineering hey, team. Hey, everyone. And we'll uh, talk about what just has been announced, what's coming next, and all the goodies that Sam brought to the table during Ignite. See you then. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. And we have Sam George with us today. Hello. Sam, hi. thanks for joining it's the great show to again. See you. Yeah. So great we, to are, be here. we are at Ignite 2019. We are. And uh, we actually, last week, had a bunch of announcements for Azure IoT. Yep. Before we go into these announcements, yeah. tell me about what happened since you come last on the, year on, last year on yeah. the IoT show. What happened? Uh, so much has changed. So um, first and foremost, you know, we continue to um, round out. We uh, announced that $5 million investment. We've been yeah. doing a tremendous amount of engineering work. I think, as you know, yeah. um, creating one of the most powerful platforms on the planet. Um, We've also been very focused on simplification, right? Like making it available for mass market. Yeah. Making it so that uh, every company on the planet, regardless of technical skills, can benefit from IoT. Um, nice. And of course, security. So since last year, we uh, made generally available Azure Security Center for IoT, yep. as well as Azure Sentinel, and the two work great together to give you a single pane of glass that covers your entire posture, across yeah. on-prem, IoT, Edge, even other clouds. So oh, from a SecOps from perspective, Tiny devices awesome. all the way That's down right. to the cloud. And totally Absolutely. integrated for IoT pros. Yep. So I think we have, we have sessions about these topics that you we guys do. can watch on demand, so we'll add the links down there. Yep. So simplifying IoT, how yeah. is it shaping? I mean, we, all the announcements we made actually are totally in that direction. So yeah. tell me about these announcements that are examples of how we're simplifying IoT. Sounds great. So last year at Ignite, we announced uh, IoT Central was generally available. Yep. And this year we came back with a huge set of new innovations for IoT Central. Yep. And a lot of that has really been aimed at simplification. So IoT Central builds on our powerful IoT platform that we've developed over the last five yep. years. Yep. And all the great services there, but packages it up into a simple to use, really it's an IoT app platform yeah. that enables you to quickly, I mean within seconds, provision an application, mm -hmm. customize it in just a few hours, go to the go to uh, production the same day. Yeah. So um, we have the public preview now of IoT plug and play. Yeah. Uh, that was in some of the keynotes. And yeah. of course that makes it so that I can take a device that IoT Central's never seen plug it in and data just starts flowing, dashboard appears. So super simple. Um, we also announced a ton of new features here at Ignite. Um, we had recently made available white labeling yeah. so that you can make IoT Central really reflect your own brand, whether you're mm -hmm. a customer or a partner. Um, we announced just uh, at Solution World Congress, IoT Edge support. We announced the ability to save and load applications, custom user roles. Um, we announced uh, continuous data export to new, to new targets. Yep. Um, we announced multi-tenancy, we announced APIs, so it's really picking up steam, and it the is. response from partners has been great. So it seems like IoT Central is becoming more and more of the center of gravity yeah. for the IoT developments, right? As a, as a customer, I should actually start looking into IoT Central before I even consider customizing an application yeah. and building for my, on my well, own. I think right? it really depends on who you are as a customer. Okay. You know, some of the customers from, let's say, the, you know, some of the most technically sophisticated customers on the planet, um, they still tend to build at the platform level because they want ultimate control. But for sort of mainstream and mass market, we really recommend starting yeah. with IoT Central yeah. um, because everything that it does, like it, it covers really the 80% case of IoT, but then it covers all the things that are really hard to get right, yeah. like high availability and disaster recovery and scalability, and it has a simple per device pricing model that just makes it predictable what you're gonna pay. Awesome. So, yeah. You mentioned IoT plug and play. Yes. So this is uh, something that actually seems magical and miraculous. It is. Like yeah. you plug yeah. a device and yeah. it just, it just works. shows up. Yeah, yeah. So it's all required to have the, uh, the industry on board, right? The device yeah. manufacturers. Yep. What's your feeling regarding how the device manufacturers are reacting to our announcements of plug and play? Yeah, well the reaction has been great from the device manufacturers, mm -hmm. and you see a lot of them have already jumped in and started certifying plug and play devices, even though it's still in public preview. Um, I think the industry's ready for something like this. Um, and by the way, we'll take this to standards bodies. You know, we're not precious about you know, IoT plug and yep. play. We want it to benefit anyone, whether it's on our cloud or other clouds. We just want the industry to go faster and for customers to get to value faster. So that's what yep. we're doing with IoT plug and play. That yep. makes perfect sense. Yeah. 
leads me to another question about the relationship we have with other types of partners, right? We did some announcements around yeah. maps. Yes, absolutely. That actually really highlight how we are partnering with specialists in service, like different types of areas. Can yep. you talk to us about Azure absolutely. Maps announcements? Absolutely, yeah. So with Azure Maps, one of the things that we've taken a focus on with Azure Maps is number one, giving customers really enterprise grade security and privacy mm -hmm. with maps. You know, Azure Maps is an enterprise offering. And so what that means is I, as an enterprise, can come, use Azure Maps, keep all of my data private to me, mm -hmm. um, you know, have my own private maps that I want, um, and then be able to benefit from a, an incredible map ecosystem that we've built up. So we started with TomTom, who provides all the base mapping capabilities, um, geospatial analytics, and then we added Moveit that does transit information, um, and then we just announced a partnership with AccuWeather. And so AccuWeather provides all of the dynamic like weather forecasting. We can now do routing around weather. Yeah. So like if I've got a, um, a shipment that I'm doing and I need to avoid snow in the passes, for example, yeah. I can do that now, and no other mapping provider has that. Yeah. So um, Azure Maps is just, um, we've seen phenomenal pickup from it. Um, and it's very much, you know, the Microsoft recommended approach for using Maps when you're building an Azure solution. Nice. Totally different topic, yeah. but related. So Maps is about location for devices. Yes. TSI is yes. about time-based data. Time series right? insights. Time series. Yep. So can we, can we talk a little bit about yeah. TSI? Absolutely. So time series insights is our, it's really a, you think of it more as like a serverless offering mm -hmm. for time series data at really massive IoT scale. Okay. Um, and Time Series Insights includes not only a platform for Time Series, but also a user experience. So it's almost a SaaS offering up at the top. Okay. A user experience. It's also used, of course, by IoT Central. Okay. Um, but with Time Series Insights, you know, someone like a typical knowledge worker uh, that's uh, fluent in something like Excel mm -hmm. can learn how to find insights and um, find anomalies and patterns over time from petabytes of IoT data yeah. in about an hour. Like it just takes just a little bit of time to learn it. And then yeah. the queries that you complete, com that complete over petabytes of data um, happen in sub-seconds. I mean, it's amazingly fast. Yeah. So we announced a big new set of capabilities mm -hmm. of public preview refresh of some of our new industry-leading capabilities, including the ability to have not only our very fast um, warm storage, uh, yeah. we refer to it as, but also bring your own cold storage, either Azure storage blobs or now um, kind of data lake storage data. Data. too. Exactly. Yeah. And we write out time series data in an Apache Parquet format. Um, and so then it'll work with the broad ecosystem of analytics tools out there as well. And for a customer, it's great because it's in your own subscription, right, yeah. all that data. And so it gives you the best of both worlds, being able to have lightning fast queries, but also being able to store decades worth of IoT data and query across them as one holistic offering. And then we also introduced something we call a time series model, which enables you to build a schema of your data. Yeah. Um, and so then you can browse that data and search for it based on that. Based on the so, schema. Exactly. It actually exactly. happens to be compatible with plug and play. Exactly. Yep. So that it, means that. Yep. And the time series model is aligned with plug and play, yeah. which is actually also aligned with what we're doing with digital twins. So both of those use the digital twin definition language, which yeah. is a schema for describing any environment, any device, and all, all that. Yep. Talking about digital twins, yeah. we this is all the things that we just announced. Yeah. And uh, we are really, we need to ship that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Let's, let's get to work. It's coming. <laughs> But um, what's next? What's after that? I yeah. know we are actually adding layers to we simplify are. how IoT is built. Yep. Still leaving developers go under the hoods and, yeah. and tweak what's happening under, but we're elevating the conversation. Yeah. Digital Twins is part of that elevation. It really is. Right? It really is. And with Digital Twins, it provides a very natural way to you know, model an environment and then connect devices to it. And one of the things we just announced um, today, in fact, was a partnership with ANSYS, and they do some really, really sophisticated uh, simulation, including physics simulations. Okay. Um, so they can go into, like if you model a factory, they can go in and do simulation and tell you, hey, if you change the following things, you'll increase production by 10, 15%. Yep. Um, so uh, ANSYS just announced that they are building on top of digital twins and aligning on the digital twin definition language and then providing simulation for that. Um, so it's a fantastic partnership. Yeah. So the future is bright. Yes, the future is very if I may bright. Say. Yes, it is. Sam, thanks for the of updates. Course. Yep. We're going to have other opportunities at Build yep. next year at night. Real pleasure. Thanks, Sam. Thanks right. for watching the IoT show. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to watch all the uh, sessions on demand from Ignite 2019. Thank right. you, guys. Thanks, everyone.